Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm well. Thank you for asking. I was just calling and I'm ready. So I was wondering if you were ready to get started. I'm ready. Okay. Hello and welcome to the Social Butterfly Show. My name is Kat and I am your host. Today I have my very special friend. What would you like to be called? <laughs> Call me as I am. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Indigo, this is Miss Indigo for everybody out there. My name is Indigo Holiday. I've been great friends with Kat since we were kids. And I'm very excited to be here today on your show. So thank you for having me. Thank you for joining me. This is our first episode. And I'm currently in New York City right now exploring the world of theater. So I would like to do a light dive into the theater industry, your experiences with it. If you have any tips for people who have aspiring actor dreams, you know, what you've gone through, if you could change anything. That's what I'd like to talk about with you today. Awesome. So first, um, if you'd like to tell your history and how you wanted to get involved with it in the first place. Okay. Um, so I've always loved movies. Like, I love movies since I was a kid. And I actually was in a lot of plays when I was younger. I've always like had a passion for acting. Um, okay, so I'll just tell you from the beginning. The first play I did, <laughs> the first play I did was Cinder, uh, not Cinderella, Snow White. It was at my kindergarten, mm -hmm. and like, you know, I just I wanted to do it, and so I was I was Snow White in the play, and this boy who actually went to middle school with us, I don't want to say his name on here, but <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. Uh -huh. But uh, he was short. He went to my kindergarten. He was one of my dorks, one of my seven dorks. So mm -hmm. that was cool. And then I did like plays in, you know, elementary. Um, we went to we went to Levy Middle School. I was always interactive and like, you know, when we had like little school plays that Miss Thompson put on, we were in seventh grade or like, you know, after school programs. Like it's just always been my thing. Um, and then when I went to high school, I wasn't so active in it because the high school I went to, we just didn't have much of anything. Like all we had was academics. And then we had like, you know, student ran after school clubs. And then we did have like, an, uh, and I'm doing air quotes right now, a drama <laughs> club that I tried to audition for my freshman year. And they didn't pick me. And the same lady, um, my senior year, I re-auditioned to be like in the showcase and she also didn't pick me. And I just feel like, why would you not pick me? Like there was only like six or seven people in the club. So that was like kind of like my first um, encounter with like rejection. And mm -hmm. I kind of just left theater alone for a bit, but I always still love movies. Like I would watch movies um, when we had DVDs and like I would watch disc two cause that was the behind the scenes. And I would like watch these actors, you know, get into their hair and makeup and I would watch them in their trailers rehearsing or, you know, I would watch like what they did to get in character and I just was obsessed with it. Um, fast forward, I'm in college, you know, I'm health administration major and I was like, you know what, when I graduate, like I'm moving to L.A., I'm pursuing my dreams, I'm doing this. So I actually started taking theater classes my junior year of college. And I fell in love with it all over again. Um, in our theater class, like we did a lot of work with plays and we did a lot of improv. We did, um, like we just played around a lot with it. You know, we practiced plays and stuff like that. And like, we, we got to watch plays for free. So I fell back in love with theater. I'm sorry, that's my uh, AC unit. I'm sitting on the patio, Five. I can hear that. Must be head. hot. Yeah, we in the ATL, so. <laughs> But Imagine. yeah, um, so I fell back in love with it in college. I moved to LA and I enrolled myself in an acting studio. And mm -hmm. it was like the best thing I ever did. I really unlocked so much hidden potential that I just didn't know I had. And um, I fell in love with it. You know, I learned about Shakespeare. I mean, we learned about all these different plays like 
I didn't even know that much about plays, but we're reading all these plays and we started forming them in our classes. And it, th- those were like, you know, my training, that was my training. That was like the, the sparring room, you know, and it just, I developed this love for it. So fast forward, COVID hits, um, kind of got a little unmotivated. And once I finally realized, like, hey, you know, I can't sit here, let life pass me by. I'm not getting any younger. Um, I made the choice to move to Atlanta. I found out Atlanta has a really good theater base. I'm currently taking classes at the Alliance Theater. And I have, like, aspirations to actually join their theater company. It's separate from the classes. So the classes are separate from, like, you know, the theater company. But um, you can still train there. So okay. I've been taking opportun- the opportunity to do that, taking advantage of that. And, like, when they have their – they have um, two auditions per year. And so I'm going to do the, the audition that's coming up for the summer. And that will be, like, for the fall season of plays. So – that's like my next aspirations as far as theater. Um, I actually auditioned for a play and they wanted me, but they wanted me for a different part because I had submitted my audition late. And um, they, they were like, we really like that audition. Would you want to do this other part? But I turned down that other part because no offense to the play, but like the, the play was about, um, black women and about like hair and all this stuff and like I just didn't identify with the character that they that they um wanted to give me which was kind of like you know a light-skinned girl that was like I'm not mad why y'all mad because I got good hair and that's just like you know I mean it is what it is those roles have to be played but I just didn't want to play that role so I, I I declined that but um yeah I've learned a lot about like rejection and understanding like you have to be resilient in this business you can't let anyone tell you you're not good enough you have to just believe that you are and you have to keep giving it your best and you know that was my that was my fuck up like I shouldn't have submitted that audition late but you make mistakes you live and you learn and yeah so here that's where we are today now so what is your dream role that you would like to play is there a specific um, because you're not into musicals, you're specifically into straight up theater or movies or where are you wanting to go with? Them? You know what? We actually are having a musical theater class that they're starting this summer and I'm going to join it because I can't sing, but I, I would like to do be a little Broadway musical or something. Yes. <laughs> I've always, I've always wanted to be in the Lion King on Broadway. Nice. That's like something that I've always wanted to do. Um, but yeah, as far as my dream role, I think just a role where I'm able to really get deep and raw and show emotion and um, and allow people to identify with me and with these experiences and, you know, tell somebody's story, whether it be my story, their story, you know, anybody, anybody who can relate to it and understand like, hey, you know, this might be a movie, but this, this is me or I can see that, you know, this motivated me or this this resonated with a part of my life, you know, so I want to be able to, like, connect with people through art. Right. Um, I would like to go down as a scream queen because I like horror, and I would like to be in a few horror films. So that's something I would like to do. Do you also, feel like you have a good scream? Oh, I have a killer scream. I can scream. <laughs> So, I mean, I want to I wanna get, like, attacked by a psycho. I don't want to do a possession movie. It's like, I don't really right. like too much. I like possession movies, but, you know, I'd rather do, like, thriller. Oh, my God, he's <laughs> chasing me through the woods. Right. Yeah, so. Um, I think I mentioned I like drama. I mean, right. I, I want to do plays definitely because, like, plays are a great practice. Like, you perform live every day, and, you know, you – it's one and done theater this is it you show up you give your best performance right that live life Mm -hmm. but um with the studios that are down there have you also looked into television have you tried television yet yes so i've i'm actually like in the process of starting doing background work for TV. Mm-hmm. Um, 
it's so much work that gets filmed out here, so many shows. So they're always like looking for extras. And that's like a good way to get your foot in the door with, you know, shows and stuff like that. Cause they're, it's just easy. It's easy work and you get to be around other actors. You get to be on set. So I'm getting into that. Um, I, w- I wouldn't mind. I want to do everything. Honestly, I don't have like one specific thing, like whatever comes first. I'm not trying to map it out like, oh, I have to do this first and do that first. I used to be like that, but now I'm understanding life more and I'm understanding that like when the opportunity presents itself, you just have to take it. You can't be so focused on, well, I haven't done this and oh, I want to do that. So I have to wait till I've t- you know, trained more or this and that. No, you have to take that opportunity when it comes. Snatch it. So if you could tell someone based on your experience, a definite do and a definite don't, what would you tell them? A definite do would be to, um, in between in between gigs, stay enrolled in classes. Like, mm. I've been in between gigs for the past two years because I had a gig like a couple years back and I did an independent film. And then like, I would get a little small thing, you know, a short film or, um, or, I'd be in a talent showcase or something like that and like perform in front of agents and be like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm about to get something. And then, you know, you wait and you wait and you wait. And then it's like, okay, well, nothing's going on right now. Stay in classes in between all that stuff. Because when you're in classes, whether it's theater classes, dance classes, whatever you're into, you know, music, learn, learning how to take vocal lessons, like anything, you're perfecting your craft, you're, t- you're fine tuning that skill, you know? Just like a football player can be a star athlete on the team, but if he's not going to practice every day, he's not going to be able to show up on game day and be that star player. Right. So that's a definite do. A definite don't, um, I know this sounds cliche, but like, don't let one no turn you away. Like, absolutely. That no is just, just use it to make you go harder. Hit. How much harder though? Like, have you discovered your burnout or have you, have you um hit burnout yet? Or have you gotten fatigued or? I know I'm about to be so, got, I'm about to yeah. be so transparent with you, Kat. Like, cause I feel like people need to hear this. And I just, I didn't even know if I was gonna share this. I was burnt out before I even fucking started. I'm mm-hmm. actually just now being ambitious. I mean, I was, I feel like I've been faking the funk and I've been putting on a good face and telling people, oh, I'm doing all these things. I was just showing up. I was just showing up and doing the bare minimum. I wasn't, mm-hmm. I wasn't working hard to be that star player. I wasn't working hard, putting in overtime. You know, you see these you see these rappers and they're like always in the studio. They live in the studio, you know? You see these singers and they're always on their keyboard writing music and playing songs. They're in their room playing their guitar, singing. They're putting in work nonstop. I was just showing up twice a week to class and, you know, uh, submitting myself to auditions once a month. Mm -hmm. Like that's not going hard. And I was doing that because I was living a life of, Fast life, fast money, party, 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 turn up, turn up, turn up. Hang out with these niggas. Let's see. Let's have fun. And right. I wasn't putting me first. I wasn't putting my career first. I wasn't putting my health first. I wasn't putting anything first. I mean, when you're living in addiction, whether you're addicted to money, addicted to liquor, addicted to sex, weed, whatever you're doing, like when you're living in that type of life where you're always just worrying about party, fun, money. I got to make this money. I got to get this money. I got to get this money. You're not thinking about your, your, your true passions because you're trying to make all this money so that you can save up and be comfortable. That goal that you're working towards, you're never going to reach that because you're always trying to make money. And like, now I see why, you know, I was listening to a podcast, like Will Smith was saying, I mean, not a podcast, a, a YouTube video. And Will Smith had like a motivational speech and he was just like, fuck plan B, C, and D. That's distracting from plan A. And like, that's why you hear all these stories of these celebrities who like, when they finally did it, like they struggled, they went broke, you know, they were homeless even. It happens, but they, nothing deterred them from the plan. And I was deterred from the plan. So I'm not burnt out yet. I'm actually like just getting started. Mm-hmm. 
I'm glad that like you've refound your like the fire has rekindled. Cause um I was listening to James Blake actually. It was it was a an interview of him and he was talking about how even though he was in the creative process so much, you know, like he would be writing out his sadness and music is therapeutic, right? But mm-hmm. then people start saying how much they love the song and he's like, Yeah, but that I was so sad when I wrote that song. So, you know, it's like why it's almost like being reminded, but it was a release. But when people keep reminding you of what you were trying to release, then it's mm-hmm. it's kind of painful to get reminded. So it is very important to take care of your mental health and to actually take a step back sometimes. Like in the program I just finished, we were told specifically to make sure we take care of our bodies and our mental health first. So we had the opportunity to extend classes because a lot of the people were getting so much burnt out, so burnt out. There were so many injuries. Like we couldn't do things full out because we could, we didn't have the energy to. So it's good to recognize when your body is telling you to sit down, but also like it's good to recognize when you know, like today, for example, I was in class and I was learning the steps, but I'm like, something isn't clicking in my body. And I'm like, oh, I'm not doing it full out. Like I'm doing it, but I'm not going the hardest that I can in this moment. Because Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like I paid for this class. So this 90 minutes, I need to give it my all, which is why it was important that I didn't take all those classes at once during the program. So I completely understand exactly like why you know you got tired so yeah those you are made very- a good point too when you said um you weren't doing it full out and i remember you remember miss debbie mm-hmm. i remember like one time in a dance class that i had took with her or whatever she was just like why are you not going full out and i was like i know the moves like you know this is just the rehearsal and she was like oh no you don't show up on the day of trying to go full out. You go full out now. Like you show, you do it. You do that now. You perform every single time. Like it's the performance. Like you don't just, you know. And I and I lived like that. I lived my life like that. Just showing up and just just being there. Just going through the motions. Just doing the moves in my acting classes. You know, showing. They were my teacher would see dramatic differences. Like sometimes I would just come show up and for weeks and weeks and weeks, I'm just going by. And then one day I would get this passion in me and say, you know what? I need to, I need to put my all into it. I'm pay- like, what you said, I'm paying for this. I'm right. here, right? I gotta, I gotta like, the, the work starts now in the classroom. The work starts now. Like when you're trying to get that next job, you know, even with the petty little auditions, the two liners, you put your all into that shit because you got to treat that like it's a fucking, uh, Quentin Tarantino movie or something because hey, I'm here. This is I, this is what I said I was gonna do. I'm gonna do it. It's very important to treat every class like an audition. Like it, yes, it is okay to mess up in class. Yes, it is okay to like ask questions in class because that's your learning process to figure out how you learn. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I realize like. I do the best in some classes when I don't ask questions and I just like watch and observe. Right. I'm just there being completely receptive. Like today I was taking a class with, um, what his name is Marcus, Marcus Alex Cobb. He, we met him during the program and he definitely trains for the stage. Like, and I'm thankful for that. And I was not signed up for his class, but I walked out the building. And he was standing outside, like, oh, I'm like, oh, oh, snap. You know, when you see somebody, you're like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm going to have to get with you in a second. So I stayed. I ended up going to get some chicken nuggets. And then I came back to class. And he was like, you need to look up. Like, even now, when you're talking to me right now, like, you're not looking at me. Like, you're looking at the floor. And I'm like, dang. Mm-hmm. Like, just when you think you're confident, like, your body language is not reading confidence. So, right. he just read me. He read me like a book. So, I know that, oh, I know what, you also did a lot of modeling as well. Do you feel yes. like, with your modeling, where do you feel like that took you? Do you feel like, not, where do you, what do you feel about modeling? I want to get back into it. 
I really do. I just was talking to Jade the other day. You know, Jade's um actually not to like deviate off the topic. I'm not to answer your question, but Jade is actually like doing really well and on the fashion tip right now. You know, she's like taking classes with a seamstress who makes prom dresses, and Jade's learning how to like make dresses, and she's Good. like hand hand sewing beads onto dresses and i'm like so proud of her but so anyways i say that because you know i'm texting jade the other day and i'm sending her all these outfits and i'm like you know what do you think about this because like creative direction is kind of like interesting to me and i was like Mm -hmm. i think i want to just start like putting together looks and like photo shoots and stuff i feel like the photo shoots i've done in the past like they they were cool and they got the likes but I feel like I can go deeper and I feel like I want to get back into it and just like be, be, you know, like put my, put myself out there in a different way. And I want to like tap back into modeling because it was fun for me and it came naturally, but also it was something where it was like, Hey, you know, let me step outside of like the sexy model field. Let me actually step into the high fashion. Let me actually step into the creative, like futuristic type of thing. That's really trendy right now. You know, everybody's like, everybody thinks they're an alien you know like let me get into some of that cool shit and you know play around with it because like as artists like we don't have to be one thing you know and I think like people want us to be one thing and I don't ever really consider myself to be one thing like I definitely I definitely want to creatively explore modeling more I think modeling is really good too because people think like, oh, it's just a picture, you know, they, they used to look down on models and think like, oh, you know, you're just pretty, you're a pretty face or whatever, but it's actually an expression and it's like a form, a form of storytelling in its own way, you know, so. Definitely. Yeah, uh, it I'm, gives you confidence. Right. Like, you feel good, like, when, you know, I feel good, like, when I'm behind the camera and I'm just playing around and doing different stuff. Like, it, it's fun. It's definitely fun. It's been a passion for a long time. I do not know who told me this, but they were in the professional industry. And they said that you cannot do high fashion modeling, like, runway specifically over the age of 26. Right. I don't know. Like, but I'm like, what? What? We are also on the the shorter side. Yeah, being under five is actually like five nine. Mm-hmm. But I did get to walk New York Fashion Week at an up and coming model. Um, it was they've been doing it for ten years, but they specifically look for new faces. And I've been on a couple of different apps lately looking for people to talk to and Tinder and Bumble are one of them. Like Mm -hmm. I met someone who styles for Louis Vuitton on, I know on Bumble. And he's like, yeah, you know, we just finished for the spring, but in autumn, I'm like, excuse me, sir, please. Thank you. That is all. (laughs) I'm definitely not about to beg, but you know, that would be a nice spot. So these apps where you can just talk to people I found a lot of different interesting human beings like to talk to on apps so I guess you know you've lived more places than I like this is my first four months in a different city that I'm not going to school in so how do you create a network in a new place um that's a good question I think when you are in your field and you're doing the things that you love, um, you start to find like-minded individuals. I think it just, they kind of either get sent to you or your place together, whether it be people in your class, people that you work with. Um, Maybe I'm at at the same, I'm going to go see the same play as another girl and we might be sitting next to each other and we're both laughing and we give each other a look or something and we like connect in that moment. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, hey, what's your name? And stuff like that. And you get those contacts. And it kind of happens genuinely. And it's scary building a network um, in different places. I feel as though the more genuine connections I have had have been when I've been around like-minded individuals. When I was working, you know, in bars and stuff like that where, like, okay, we were all just living a superficial life. Those were the connections 
that I kind of held on to more tightly and and I had to hold on tightly because they weren't like genuine when things are genuine you don't feel like you're gripping and you're like oh you know like you don't feel like you're gripping you feel like at ease so I feel like surround yourself with like-minded individuals and do the things that you love and those connections like will form and also being on those apps because I remember when I moved to LA um, I was on Bumble because I heard about it because it was like hey do you want to make friends like it's a dating app for friends. And like, I met a couple girls on Bumble and like, I ended up linking up with them and I was like, Hey, you guys are cool. And it didn't last like super long because one of the girls ended up moving. And then another girl, like, you know, we just would text or like follow each other on Instagram and stuff and like comment under each other's pictures, but it still was a way to connect with people, you know? Yes. Our so first, just, like that. Uh our first listener right now shout out to Val I actually met her at a model call the first model call I went to in New York and she has definitely been one of the most genuine relationships that I've made here in New York she also does modeling and she's just a very genuine soul like that's dope hey right? Miss Val she's like hey so <laughs> I just wanted to um shout her out because I was sending out the link and she was like let me slide let me slide and come listen so Mm -hmm. uh, I was gonna get back to the topic of like you and your experiences Mm -hmm. is there anything else that because I feel like I've created a certain presence on the internet because I do work with different age so many different age groups like I don't necessarily count myself as a public figure, but I am in the public eye a lot and I'm going to continue to be in the public eye a lot. Mm -hmm. So for the younger generation, I'll share first if you want me to like as well, like, are there any, are there any regrets that you have like in your childhood? Mine specifically, like even now going into adulthood is connection with my parents specifically like I've always had a super supportive parent household like not everyone has like that blessing that I did where I have both parents in the house and both of them wanted me to succeed and they never told me they told me no but they didn't tell me like you're dreaming too big Mm -hmm. like I got that more from an auntie perspective like well how are you and it wasn't even like you're dreaming too big it was how are you going to achieve these big dreams? So I guess finding respect for my elders in a way, and I was talking about this with my uncle yesterday, like, you know, like, I just feel like my opinion doesn't matter to my mom. And he's like, well, one day she's not going to be here and you're just going to wish that you said yes to her just to make her happy because at the end of the day, she, she wanted what she thought was best for you. But yeah, just like, showing like true respect to like people in general but specifically around my parents like not not trying to make them happy but finding the respect balance so just going forward you know like still holding my ground on certain things like for example my mom wanted to do coils in my hair and she started doing them last night and the back is real cute and real tight But then this morning, like, she didn't want to put water in my hair to continue to coil it. I'm like, Mama, like, we need to put more water so the top is poofy right now. But she finished it, and it was something that she wanted to do. So on the one hand, she got the respect for me where I was just like, okay. But on the other hand, it was like, I know what's best for me as well because it's me. Like, I'm an adult now, so... Yeah, that's, like, something that I I wanted to share and just, like, on a more personal note that's not, like, these are my dreams and aspirations just for for the younger generation. Yeah, I I can relate. I feel like when we were younger, we were just so ready to do our own thing. We didn't want anybody telling us what to do. And, you know, you get older and you realize, you know, my daddy, he knew something. Or my mama she wasn't she wasn't wrong about that or you know hey like I'm, I'm older now and I'm realizing it's okay to take advice that doesn't mean you're a fuck up it doesn't mean you're you know you you don't know anything you're stupid it's okay to take advice from people and to actually 
ask questions like how, how did you handle this or how did you feel about that because they've lived they've lived before us and you know they've had these lives and maybe it wasn't exactly our lives but they've had experiences and you just never know like you might be turning down um solid advice just because you think you can't relate or you think they don't know what they're talking about you think you know what's best so i can relate um also advice that i can give i guess to the younger generation is trust your intuition and trust yourself like at the end of the day there will be times where you might doubt yourself and think like can i really do this but if there's something that's always tugged on your heart something that's always um you know been something that you wanted to try and do but maybe you felt discouraged or you didn't have the confidence to do it like sometimes you might not get that outside influence that's going to be like yeah you can do it you know because we look for that we look for that confirmation from others like do you think that i would be good at this do you think and you know you have to look within yourself like like at the end of the day you are we're we're all humans but we are spiritual beings and like that intuition is something that's strong within us it's a feeling and when you have a gut feeling like listen to it you know and i would say patience because i feel like even with even with our generation but especially with the generation now everything's so based on in, instant gratification i mean our whole thing with our generation was like oh you know you want to be married and have kids and like you know i want to be married by 25 i want to have kids by 30 and all this stuff and you know we just had the we just had this idea of like you know that was going to be our lives and that's just so young to like put those those limitations on ourselves like oh by this age i have to do this and it's not about age like and, and it's not a, everything doesn't have to happen right now i mean we're both 26 going to be 27 and we're like just now figuring out life and we don't even all have it together but we're still figuring it out and it's like never too late to go after your dreams you know like that guy who said oh you know over the age of whatever like all those bound uh barriers are being shattered i mean fucking rihanna them put big girls skinny girls short girls white girls black girls asian girls girls with no hair girls with long hair girls with froze girls with weaves like she's like put some of everybody she's put men in her fucking lingerie fashion shows and she's been killing the game like so that just goes to show like you can't let these barriers hold you back age means nothing time is not a real thing like it doesn't matter if you start when you're 50 years old it don't matter if you start when you're 10 years old like you're not behind in life you are right. exactly where you need to be this is true i would say definitely trusting your intuition and then like it it's so like going back to what you said earlier about hitting nose like those nose make you stronger like literally what's the worst that can happen they say no and then what if they say yes and you're going to be confused and you're you might even be confused that you didn't try sooner like yeah are you be like damn that was easy and then you expect everything to come easy in life exactly and it it can come easy but what does easy really look like to anybody like right so I guess if you could turn into an animal, what would it be? <laughs> um the name of your show, a butterfly. Ah, why? <laughs> I love butterflies and I wouldn't really want to be a bird. I feel like that's kind of awkward. I don't want to be. <laughs> But I would like to fly. But I want to be pretty. You know butterflies got the most awkward flight patterns. They're so random. <laughs> <laughs> they just be flapping. I'm not going to say the R word, but they be flapping very disjointed actually. Just fluttering, just like catching convulsions. Sideways, like why? Like, mm. Okay. Let me see. I wouldn't want to be a fish because like but butterflies get eaten by birds. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I I wouldn't want to be a fish because like the, the ocean is a dangerous place. Finding Nemo taught us that. Like, it's a dangerous place. You can and get I don't want to be a big ass shark. Like, I don't want to just be mad all the time. Like, what am I going to eat? 
gotta eat, gotta get the blood. Like I don't, I don't want that. What about a turtle? You could fly underwater with them flaps. I mean, I would just be chill. I'd be a chill ass turtle. That would be cool, but you know, most turtles don't even really make it. Like you got to be the strongest of the strong. Oh, okay. Going back to the theater. Uh, well, live performance. Do mm-hmm. you prefer big venues or small venues? Like packed out stadiums, you can't see anybody's face. Or would you prefer like a more interactive setting where you could almost, you definitely see the audience? Because I've been doing a lot of research into immersive theater mm-hmm. and how it's actually a very small audience and is very intimate. And you can make it like sometimes just as much as a major theater that charges ten dollars a ticket. If you charge ten people one hundred fifty dollars a ticket, then boom, you got it right there. Um, good question. Good question. Preference. I will say preference. I would like to do you know packed out shows like doing tours. I mean the whole nine. But I think that's just like if I had to choose. But I do think that immersive theater is really cool. And I actually went to a show when Jade came and visited me. And it was a small it was a small cast of only like seven people, six or seven people. And they were like going backstage and changing and playing different characters. And it wasn't that many of us in the crowd, but it was a good amount. And like we felt it and they gave it their all and they performed like they were on Broadway. Like uh-huh. it doesn't matter. Like I feel like it doesn't really matter the size of the audience like when you when you show up and you do your part and you are in that moment like whoever is meant to be there at that show is going to be there right yeah i've done a lot of under 100 people shows but i'm very excited for my snoop dogg concerts 100 100,000 people in the audience you know yes it, it's, uh, well, let's just say 50,000 because the way certain things are going right now, you could tell it's smaller. Mm-hmm. Like certain things are getting smaller because of COVID, but hopefully we can get to the point because we got to see the Tina Turner play um, the other day, like Saturday or Sunday, yesterday with my mom. Mm-hmm. And she said she packed out Rio and there was 100,000 people and the Jesus. audience, I'm like, yes, right? Like, that's amazing. And it was based on a true story. Oh, that's going to that's gonna spurt off into a different question line. Mm-hmm. But because I, I have, like, some of the questions that I did write down. Um, your tattoo meanings. I know you have a mm-hmm. few. Would you like to tell us about them? The ones on my back or just all my tattoos in general? I mean, you're just the tattoos you want to talk about. All right. Um, let's start with the ones on my back. So at first I had the Ankh tattoo and that was my first tattoo. (laughs) And, um, I went to the mall and I got it. My cousin was with me. Were you with me? No. You wasn't with me and Shay Shay? No, Shay Shay (laughs) Foule. I was not. Okay, my cousin was with me, and I guess her friends were with us, and um, that was my first tattoo. So the Ankh is basically um, not, it was heavily used in Egyptian culture, but it actually has always been around in African culture. But um, the Ankh just symbolizes eternal life, and it um, symbolizes living, you know? And Mm -hmm. I always always liked it, I always wanted it. Um, I don't really have a super deep meaning behind it other than the fact that, like, yeah, eternal life. I want to live forever and not even just, like, physically growing to the age of a thousand. I just mean, like, I want my my um, my influence to, you know, live on through my kids and they teach their kids and, you know, my teachings or whatever or whatever projects, my body of work that I put out there, people can watch that for generations or, you know, stuff like that. Um so that's what I mean. Okay. And another, the other tattoos on my back. So I have one above it and one below it. And like, forgive me, I don't know the exact pronunciations of them because they are Indinkra symbols. And it's also from African culture. But the one on the top, it means God's, God is supreme. Uh-huh. 
And I just put that there because I wanted that on the top because like God comes first. God is supreme and not even just the word God, because I understand God to be the most high. I understand God is not just um, a being. God is not a being. Like when we say God, like we think of, you know, a man in the sky and that's not what God is. Like God is everywhere. God is in everything and God is supreme. You know, he is the most high. Like everything is God. That's why I am that I am, you know, that's going to be another tattoo that I'm going to get that I've been thinking about. But, um, I am that I am. You can look around and say, I am that I am. And you can literally affirm that that's the affirmation because you can point to a tree and be like, I am that because it's strong and it's rooted. And I am that, you know, so like you can find that in everything. So God is supreme. That's on the top. And then the one on the bottom is God's love and protection because I need that around me all the time. Mm-hmm. So that's my re- most recent ones. I have one on my foot <laughs> that I got in college at a little tattoo party and I, I was drunk the tattoo artist was drunk and it's supposed to say fear none but god but he spelt none wrong he did not put the e on there so none. it says fear none but god and it's just it's, it's not the best work um <laughs> i got one on my forearm my inner forearm like the lower part and it's a compass and it says wanderlust above it and um that's probably like my favorite one because of the placement and because it's just the most clean and um yeah that one I got the compass I got it when I was in Greece and the compass basically you know it's because I love traveling and wanderlust is just like you know we wander but we're never lost and like I love traveling I love going from place to place like I've lived in you know this is my third uh, third city, third state or whatever. But like I was born overseas. My mom is from another country. My dad has traveled the world. So it's like kind of just in me. Mm-hmm. And yeah, my other tattoos are just like cutesy. Oh, I have one on my side in French and it says, le vrai beauté vient de l'intérieur. And that means true beauty comes from within. And I just wanted a tattoo in French. And I do believe true beauty comes from within. So I got that. And then, yeah, the rest of them are just, like, cutesy. How much French do you know, though? Girl, I'm not as good as I used to be. Let's just be real. I used to be so much better. Like, Ah. I I still can. I'm conversational, but you got to talk slow to me. (laughs) Talk to me slowly. Yes. Travis said no. Okay, okay. And then who are your biggest influences on Fluence Halls? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I always trip up on this question because I don't like want to leave anybody out, you know. But some of the people who I really love as actors and actresses, like I love Tom Hardy. He's so he's such a good actor. Um and like he's just had an interesting life i think most artists are tortured souls and they go through a lot of shit like addiction or mental health issues but like usually we ended up we end up cleaning up our acts and so i like his story and i think he's a very good actor um i love taraji p henson that's my girl like i just enjoy everything she does um tyler perry lately has been a bigger level of respect that i've had just mm-hmm. from the fact of like, okay, everybody used to talk shit like, oh, he does Medea and like, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's that's not good for the black culture. But I mean, those movies actually help people get through some real hard times. I know like those movies, yeah, they might be funny and goofy, but they actually had a message. And, you know, he just went from nothing and never gave up on his dream and like became a fucking billionaire, owns his own studio, his own production studio. And it's the largest one in America so it's like he's got people shooting Marvel films at his studio so yep so um that's you great never know. have you gotten to visit there not yet not yet I like your thinking oh my god okay one more wait did you forget her? Did you did you mention everyone? Um, Eartha Kid, Lynn Whitfield, she's a boss. Um, she plays a really good mean lady, and I'm like, damn, 
she is good. Like, like she's good. <laughs> Let's see who else. Um, Meryl Streep. She's just like killer. Uh, so many people. Angela Bassett. Um, Ooh. I want to work with Regina King because she's funny as hell. What and about yeah. Issa well, Rae? I really like Issa Rae. I like Issa Rae too. I wasn't really on the whole Issa Rae bandwagon at first, like, but as a creator, I think that it's amazing that she, um, cause I wasn't like super deep into Insecure. Like I watched it, but like, I didn't watch all four seasons, but like, I remember Awkward Black Girl, that shit was funny. And the fact that she just, you know, she didn't really fit into what Hollywood wanted her to be. and she wrote this amazing show and they were like, yeah, well, I like your show, but we want Lauren London to play your part. And she was like, uh-uh, I'm playing my own fucking part. I wrote this. I, I'm, I designed this for me. I'm, I'm doing this. And now, you know, look at her now. So that's inspirational. <laughs> She's on my vision board along with Serena Williams and Rihanna. And why do you have them on your vision board? Oh, oh, oh no. The questioner has been questioned. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Issa Rae, specifically because of how she started and where she ended up. Um, she started off making she started off making her show Awkward Black Girl on the internet by herself. Like, and then she pitched it, got picked up, started insecure, and now she's one of the most she's a major producer. Like she mm -hmm also helps produce the black lady sketch show which i really need you to watch so then we can start quoting that like we used to quote mayor b <laughs> that is like that show has me like chuckle out loud every time i watch it like it, it wasn't black lady sketch show wasn't created by her but easter ray is an executive producer on it as well um rihanna mm -hmm. she uh, going back to what we said earlier stick it to one thing and then like stick to your plan a don't focus on plan a b and c she stuck to music got big got known got her money got her royalties and then used that to reinvest in something else that she was interested in like mm. I've, i'm not just interested in dance as well like i've i've been drawing designs of clothes since elementary school like i've been interested in fashion as well as writing and poetry and being on the stage in different aspects since like the beginning really so her being a creative that is now one of the highest paid not only black women but women in general one of the highest paid people in the world like mm -hmm. she's thinking about taking fenty public very good and then fenty itself like being a multifaceted creative brand like yes she started with lingerie but then she branched off into makeup like it doesn't always have to be in care products. like right yes. yeah like yeah so it doesn't always have to be beauty products because i'm more of an athleisure like wearable art type of person but mm -hmm. also i'm interested in cbd and herbal medicines like my my tagline is i'm cat i i give care in alternative medicine and complementary medicine I also teach class, all different types of educational purposes, because my whole family came from an educational background, and who knew I was going to continue to teach this much? And then I also create, so that's that's who I am right now, and that's how I introduce myself around the city. And then Serena, being an athletic individual as well, like she worked hard from a young age still is one of the top tennis players in the world also is known not she has her own fashion line as well like these are multifaceted black women mm -hmm. who are known internationally for something that they are good at and that they're passionate about so Issa when it comes to the comedic theater presentation working hard and then being able to help other people get on because mm -hmm. going back to the um what Issa did so she started on black lady sketch show she did insecure i mean she did awkward black girl then she did insecure and then from there she started producing the a black lady sketch show and quinita bunk I, 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 I feel like i'm not saying her name right but she did abbott elementary 
and got picked up. Like you could see Quinita was all throughout the first season of a black lady sketch show. And then they literally had to write her out somehow because she decided to write her own show and now is like got picked up by ABC. And that show makes me laugh just as hard. Like I can see Issa's comedy. I can see Quinita's comedy, like mm-hmm. everybody's comedy. And like, it just shows them working together. And then Rihanna for sticking with one thing, getting known for doing something and then being able to use the money that she's got known for to branch off into other things and then just keep investing in herself. And she also, like you said, gave back to multiple different communities. Like she wasn't picky, like, oh, I only need the bad bitches Mm -hmm. in my clothing. Like, no, like we're going to have everybody. Like I've always not been the weird kid, but I I know what isolation has felt like. Like I've been in the middle of, cliques or the communities which is why like finding my own community is so important to me right now and that was a reason I started this show because I have a community of people that I have genuine connection with that I don't have to be on your phone every single day like oh my god what are you doing today (laughs) like like, no y'all straight and whenever we talk it's gonna be the same energy giving. So I appreciate that. And then Serena is the athletic side of me, the rainbow dash, like work hard, stay looking good. We're going to be model. Like I'm not like Michelle Obama, but she's also someone who is a public figure. Like, and now she has a whole movie about her. I think we did talk about the whole will thing, but yeah, like I just saw the movie the other night too, and I just got a new respect for Serena. She's a fucking beast, and her sister—they're both beasts. Like that mm-hmm. shit was amazing. Like, you know, you see these people, and they're like the number one athlete in the world. You don't even know what type of work they put in. You don't. You don't. And if you do, then it's like, dang, would I have like worked that hard? Like, cause my daddy did that for David. Like, he wanted to do it for me, but that's where the nurturing parent came from like and I'm glad that he still like pushes me like yeah you you don't want to go out too late you know if you got an audition in the morning you might want to night just not go out at all next weekend like he Mm -hmm. still sees the fun in life but he also sees like the practicality in chasing your dreams strategically because you don't want to just be running and get burnt out but right. you do want to have a nice brisk pace, line up with the right people, and then when you see somebody like in the corner of your eye, you know, speed up a little bit. Like, hold on, you can't catch up because I've been working. I got this stamina. So, yeah, those are the three. And then there's another girl on my vision board as well. Her name is Alexis. I need to find her last name, but her name is Alexis. She's a TikToker. She is a forger. She's more of the earthy, grassy type. She's very connected to the earth. You probably have seen her. Like she'll literally pick off little buds off the trees and then make a healing ointment. And she quit her day job because she was making so much money doing what she loved on TikTok. Like it doesn't have to be TikTok, but the the aspect of I'm I don't have to work for somebody else because I know I'm good at something and the world recognizes me for being good at something. So that's why I got that. My vision board. <laughs> that's so dope. I like that. Thanks. Hey, do you have a vision board? Yes. Do you have a quote on it? Not a quote. I have words on it. Are you but... looking at it right now? Yeah, it's actually like the screensaver on my on my phone like when you open the phone it's my home screen because I like look at it every day just subconsciously you know and like the things that I put on there like I remember in the past I had material things on there and there are a couple material things on here like you know just a couple but overall most of the things that are on here it's not even necessarily like people there is one famous person on here but it was by accident but Mm -hmm. I do see myself working with them But um, it's just experiences, like experiences that I want to have. And like one of the things on here that I could share with you is like 
it's funny because we're doing it right now, it, talking on a podcast. <laughs> Look so at us go. That's manifestation, manifestation right there. Um, another one is just like the word, the word booked it. Mm-hmm. Like I want to actually like book gigs because I had always just been auditioning, auditioning or, you know, going to class. But like, I want to get that. I want to get that um, gratification of, you know, I got this part. Like, I want to book parts. So, booked it is on there. And then, like, traveling experiences, like, places I want to go. Um, I have, like, two people hugging because, like, I would much rather now have intimacy than sex. So, like, yes. intimacy is big for me. Um, and then I have a couple words on there, like, healthy, peace, successful, family, um, strength, blessings, happy. I think I said happy. Friendship. Like... That's just stuff that I want. I was reading. Well, was I reading? Was I listening or was I reading? I don't know. I was absorbing some information about how to, uh, you know, it was a YouTube video, manifesting a partner, basically. And I technically did manifest a partner in college. Like, I got what I wanted. But now, like, I want something differently. And that was one of the questions that I wanted to ask you. Because, like, you know, like, I'm definitely a cisgendered Black woman who does maybe identify more on the pansexual and bisexual scale. And being in New York now, it's a lot of interracial love, like, Everywhere I turn around, there is someone speaking a different language than me. So on the one hand, I feel slightly isolated from, you know, 100, like, Black people, African Americans. And then when I saw the Tina Turner movie, like, yeah, she had two babies by Black men, but she ended up marrying, like, a German man. So... I have to reassess, you know, what I want in a partner, Mm -hmm. but no, I don't want to limit myself out of love, but I still like the ideal of like, I still want to marry a black man. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, but at the same time, like, do you have any thoughts on that? Like interracial love, because for like, you know, do it. Like, I'm not going to stop nobody from doing it. But if you look at like some Asian people, like, then they only marry Asian people, but then sometimes they don't. Like, it really just depends, Mm -hmm. and I don't know. So I I guess, do you understand what I'm trying to say? I really do. I really do. Um, That's a good question. I think that for me, like, I've always thought, like, I want to marry a Black man. I want, like, my kids to be Black. You know, I want to have a Black family, Black love, blah, blah, blah. But lately, I've been thinking, like, I could get with a sexy Asian with a man bun. <laughs> like, mm. um, I think <laughs> that, like, for me, it's not that I don't think I have anything in common, like, you know, with a white man or anything like that. I just haven't met one that I've connected with on a relationship type of level. Like, I've had friends that are white guys. So I'm like, oh, you're cool as fuck. And, like, we could hang all day. But, um... I don't know if you'd be able to understand everything about who I am as a woman. And not just that I'm just a black woman, because like black does not just mean black American as a black woman in this world. You know what I'm saying? Like the experiences yeah. and just who I am and the things that I'm into. You know, if if I found a guy who was not the same race as me, who could understand everything about me and, you know, not try to like make that his identity and not like make it a thing like oh yeah protect black women and like don't make it an agenda like because that's <laughs> also a turn off and I'm just like Ugh, that's kind of weird to me but like if you can understand but you're still you and I'm still me and like we can coexist and just be us but we understand each other like I feel like that would be cool I mean I saw I saw my mom's in an interracial marriage my stepdad is white and um it was interesting. It was interesting at first. It was hard at first. I just didn't feel like, like you just don't get us. But 
he actually just loves the fuck out of all of us. Like, regardless of if some jokes just go over his head, like <laughs> if right. sometimes he just doesn't get it. I mean, hey, some shit about him, I just don't get. But overall, that love is there. So I've seen mm -hmm. it work. I've seen it happen. Um, for me, I'm not really looking for a specific person. I'm looking for qualities mm -hmm. and I'm looking for how you make me feel. Um, but I'm not necessarily saying like, I'm, oh, I'm not seeking like an interracial marriage or relationship or anything like that. I'm not seeking it, but right. I'm not like going to turn away a man who loves me and loves my family and, you know, wants to see me win and is there with me through the darkest of times. You just never know who you'll end up with. So like, I'm not closing myself off to anything, but for me, I'm looking for, you know, intimacy. Like I said, like I'm looking for something totally different now. Yeah, definitely. That's why I feel like on the scale or the spectrum, like I know that I've been by for so long that that's nothing new to me. Mm -hmm. And I was in a very long term relationship where I didn't, I stopped, you know, discovering myself. I was all into one person for so long and I wanted to try to respect that relationship. But now I'm literally surrounded by millions of people, million like different cultures, like New York is the truest melting pot that we have mm -hmm. in the country. Like this is the port. People stop here first. And it's very interesting because when I was like in an environment where I did meet a lot of people in Detroit, like you know, I've never, you've been more in more countries than I have. And I have just this naked passport that I'd love to stamp with you in the upcoming years. Yes. But there's different places that I want to see, like London and Germany, Germany specifically, like Brazil, like Rio. Yes. Like the South America is definitely somewhere that I'm trying to pop all up and through. You know. I am too, girl. Brazil, we got to hit that because I always wanted to go to Brazil and London, but definitely Brazil would be so just cool. I don't know why something always draws me there. I'm trying to do some bachata and you know, some trying to mama. I'm trying to hit carnival and I'm trying to hit the fucking, you know, I'm trying to see the slums. I'm trying to see it all. <laughs> see it all because my, my friend, uh, shout out to Illy. She told me, like, you know, your your palate, once you start tasting different cultures, your palate becomes more diverse. Mm -hmm. And then the flavors of life taste differently. Like, you tired of just salt and pepper. Like, you know, you want some cayenne. You want some turmeric. Like, I had Indian food the other day. I'm like, this is good. And then the other day, like, some, and then uh, literally two days later, people were like, yeah, you know, Indian food too spicy. I'm like, what you mean? You don't want the spices? You don't want the spices? You don't want the mild? <laughs> like, I don't know. I just love the flavors of life. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to not just lick every wall in the world because, you know, you don't need to discover everything, but to be exposed and have that experience is definitely mm -hmm. something that I want to do. So. Now, why would this truck park his big ass right outside when I'm trying to have a podcast on my patio? <laughs> Sorry if you hear like rumbling. That's this random truck that wants to sit outside. Shout out to my girl. Okay. So, somebody speak to me real quick. Okay, one second. Um, I'm not here, but yes. Okay, listen to me. I need to do it for your refund. How much do you charge if I hire you? How much is your time? Because I got to go now. Oh. I need to do uh, like a choreography and I need to be trained individually. I'm going into the university just to do, but I need like a basic shit because this is too much for me. Okay. Um, what's your phone? Are you a steady here or just... I just graduated from the pro semester. Excellent. Maybe you can help me. I'm going to help you. Please help me. I'm in for Friday. Okay. You tell me. Okay. Okay. What's your name? Cat. Cat. Call me now. Okay. I have your phone confirmed. Okay. Okay. Deal. Deal. Thank you. Don't uh, say twice. Okay. So call me. Okay. 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 Good networking. Thank you. I'm just sitting here. Oh, this is real life, everybody. This is real life. <laughs> I'm glad I was sitting right here because I was going to do this at home, but this is my Maybe? new spot. This is my Period. new spot. 
LOL. Sorry. Excuse Life is me. just unfolding right in front of our eyes. Yo, definitely because whatever. Ha, she said she was an actress too. Whatever. I heard her. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Did it cut out when I called her? I think so, yeah. All right, but you but you hear. That's mm-hmm. good. That's a blessing. Ah, so <clears throat> congratulations. Well, we gonna go to cool. Brazil. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Girl, we need to hit Rio. <laughs> oh, shout out to my girl Leah. I don't know how she's hearing me, but she definitely said lick every wall of the world. Yes, I'm not trying to lick every wall of the world, but I'm trying to taste something. Okay. Okay. Well, hmm. Oh. Mm. Well, I mean. Oh, two last last two questions because people are packing up and they're about to kick me out. Okay. Biggest thing you wasted time on? No. Hmm. Because you don't waste time, you learn lessons. So I guess my next question is, did you drink water today? Ooh, that's a good question. Not that much. I drank a little this morning when I woke Like, whenever I wake up, I drink water. But throughout the day, I kept thinking, like, I need some water. I need some water. Like, my mouth feels dry. I want to drink water. But, like, I was at work. I worked a nine hour shift today. Well, I took an hour break, so eight hours, but I was like scheduled for nine hours. But um don't yeah, quit like your day that, job. Hashtag don't quit don't your, quit day, your job. day job. <laughs> as but, an artist, LOL, this is real life. This is, but yeah, I didn't drink as much as I should. So no, I had two cups of water this morning. I drank some, not a lot though. Well, drink water. Live life. Do you have any final thoughts you'd like to share? Um, no, I think I've said a lot, but thank you for having me. Like, this was great just talking with you and talking about life, talking about our experiences. And, you know, I feel like this these conversations need to be had more like we we think we're so different from people but like what connects a lot of us is like our passions and I think like you got to definitely explore those passions because connecting with um with other people like makes it fulfilling um I would like to thank you and I would like to invite you once again on to the social butterfly show you know whenever you do get the time we we'll love to. the energy like maybe we can reconvene after we step outside this country and after you book it right <laughs> yeah hashtag book it yay oh you know what i do have one final remark speaking of book it so I did an audition like a couple weeks ago and it was for a short film and like I worked really hard on the audition. Um, they called me back. I did the follow-up audition. They were like, that was great. Like, we will be in contact with you, blah, blah, blah. Like, we really loved your audition. You killed it. So I'm like waiting, waiting, waiting. And a week goes by. Finally, I get an email. They were just like, hey, so we really wanted to reach out to you. We just, like, loved everything you did at the audition. But, you know, we filled that part um with someone else like we we picked somebody else for that part but we want you to do another part and you know we think you'd be great so what do you think about that and I was just like you know what like I'm not gonna take this no as a failure like I'm going to you know just say yeah sure I'll do it and I was like really excited about it then they sent me the part the part was a piece of shit it was like two lines they wanted me to be overtly sexual And I think I was like, you know, possibly going to be dressed in skimpy clothes or even lingerie. And it was going to be like some some weird shit going on. And I'm just like, okay, so basically you didn't even allow the audition process to really you weren't paying attention to the audition. You were staring at my titties the whole time because that's basically what that tells me. So I just was like, yeah, no, I'm not taking this part. And like, it's okay to say no to parts like if you. If you put your all and did the best you could do, that part just wasn't for you. And that part just wasn't for me. They picked somebody else for it. 
And that part just probably wasn't for me. That doesn't mean I'm not a good actress. That doesn't mean because they wanted to still keep me in the project, but just as how they wanted to cast type me. So don't let people like cast type you. You don't have to accept every fucking role just because you look a certain way. You know, if you're a light skinned girl, you don't always have to play like a certain type of role because you're light skinned or if you're dark skinned, you don't have to play a certain type of role. If you're curvy body you don't have to play a certain type of role or you don't always have to be the best friend you don't always have to be like the slutty girl or whatever they try and cast you as you know you don't have to be doing all these sex scenes just because you got a, a curvy body like no don't let people put you in a box you put your all into it and if if it wasn't the part for you it's just not the part for you you could say no to things like you you have the permission to say hey no that's not for me uh this is my second time turning down a role when someone has tried to recast me and i'm like no you don't always have to say yes. So that's just like a, a reminder for people. Like, don't let people tell you who they think you are. Be who you are. And who are you, Miss Indigo? I am figuring that out. But you know what? I know I'm not a fucking bimbo that's about to be in some fucking lingerie saying some stupid ass line like, I'm not about to be doing that, so I know that much. And I know, like, I'm a deep soul. I know that much. I'm deep, and I'm very connected to the world. I'm connected to nature. I'm connected to children. Like, I think children are, you know, God's gift to this earth, and, like, we have to protect children at all costs. And I know, like, I'm going to be somebody that's telling the story for the uns the people who can't speak up for themselves, the unspoken for and all that shit. So, I mean, like, I'm not, I, I tell you one thing, I'm not a yes man. Never have been, never will be. I had myself muted because I was walking and I didn't know if there was going to be any random subway horns, but it's okay to say no. It's also... Check your email every day and make sure you respond to emails with something that we learned in school. So mm -hmm. that was the only thing that I want to say, but I want to thank you once again for sharing your thoughts, your time, your deepness, and your memories with us on this May the 2nd. Yeah. <laughs> it's 5222, baby. No? So thank you so much. Thank I you. It. I really enjoyed this. I'm glad. Your first podcast? My, My first, first podcast? podcast? Your first podcast? What? We did it! <laughs> <laughs> I love you so much. Thank you, you for listening. And this will be available for replay for anyone that wants to listen on their own time. So from the past, peace out for now, internet. Bye. Bye. <laughs>